And hello to you too, and welcome back to the Lichen Project. So today, I'm a bit late in putting this up. It's going to be my mid-year freak out tag. So this is just a sample, oh, a sample of some of the books I'll be talking about today. My best read so far in 2019 will have to go to The Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, which is an adult fantasy that's a standalone, um, which basically follows a queendom that doesn't have an heir and the threat that's awakening in terms of a dragon called the Nameless One. Um, so you follow Sir Sabran, Queen Sabran, and a whole thing. There's a lot of moving parts in this. I quite so I quite enjoyed it. Uh, the best sequel I've read so far this year would have to go to Jay Kristoff's Never Not Never Night. No, God's Grey. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, which is the second book in the Nebernight Chronicles, so you're following Mia Corvair after the events of Nebernight. New releases of the book, new releases this year that I have not yet read. Um, I have The Red Scrolls of, um, the Red Scrolls of Magic by Sandra Clare and Stanley Chu, which I'm looking forward to because I am trash for Malik. Absolute trash. Um, so I think it's just nice to have like a coupley, kissy wissy one. And then I also have... Uh, Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Camille, Hammer. Sorry, I'm trying to butcher names. Um, Brid Bridget Camille, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So you have Prince Ren and Harper in this, and it's I believe it's a bit of a portal situation. But I've also been told that there is cerebral palsy rep in this, which is quite good, and it's the first in a. So I want to get to this because I also Beauty and the Beast. So that's the Beauty and the Beast release. The most anticipated release for the second half of the year is going to be the conclusion of the Nevernight Chronicles, which is Dark Dawn, which the copy I will... They're both... There are two stunning copies. I think the US cover is like Mia, but she's got like her shadows and things. It's really pretty. But I will be ending up with what I think is Miss... Well, I'm assuming it's Mr. Kindly on the cover and it matches like all the bits and pieces so I'll also have to because it's been released I believe on the 5th of September and so yeah question five is my biggest disappointment this is in terms of I enjoyed the book I really did I have to preface it but I was disappointed in it in terms of others in the series and where this goes which is A Court of Wings and Ruin um which is the third and sort of concluding of the first sort of trilogy in Perithian that Masses put together. Um, my disappointment was in terms of I adored and loved the pacing and sort of the ebbs and flows of A Court of Mist and Fury and then this one was like ramping up for like the big climax and everything and it just felt a bit sort of here, there and everywhere. There were some really good characters in this. I enjoyed some of the characters and then like looking at those but I felt that this let me down a bit after A Court of Mist and Fury and just how epic and well balanced I felt the book was. Question number six. Now question number six is your biggest surprise and this is kind of not a book so much as it is a genre. I have recently tried to open up the genres I read, fallen into the thriller hole, and I've read The Letters and Blood by Liz Lovelock, and I've read Sadie, so I've quite enjoyed thrillers and getting into those. So that's my surprise of the year, because I've always sort of been more of a contemporary fantasy kind of reader. Uh, my new favourite authors, so they're either debut or new to you. Jandy Nelson, uh, which I've read, well, obviously I've read I'll Give You the Sun, which I did for Buzzword Readath, the Buzzword Readathon. Um, so I'll, I vlogged my experience with that one, so I'll leave that down below. And I just finished The Sky is Everywhere, so I quite like the poetic writing she has and just the whimsical touches. And then is Samantha Shannon, is the other one. So obviously I've done Priory of the Orange Tree, and I've also read oh, Pale Dreamer, which is like a novella in her The Bone Season series. So I'm now, I've gotten hold of the first book in that which is the bone season so I'm going to get onto that because I really enjoy her world building and her characters and her writing styles quite nice I like your fictional crush I haven't I don't really have one I I have a few new favorite well not actually I have a new favorite character which is the next question which is Ida he's the, the one of the priory people from the orange tree the priory 
um, Meiji person in here. I really enjoy her and her behaviors and such in here. And then we come back into Perithian and have reaffirmed my love for Azrael okay. and Race. Like, I love Azrael. He's like, I'm brooding. And actually, generally, I quite like the inner circle. So in here, Morrigan and Race and Azrael are like my new, like, not my new, like, they reaffirmed. So as much as this was a disappointing book in terms of, I don't want to say the plot, but sort of just the balancing of the plot, the inner circle of this is still some of my favourite people. And then we go on to a book that made you cry. I haven't cried in a book this year. Um, I haven't really sought out books that are going to make me cry. I know that there is a book that's made me deeply uncomfortable and angry, which is Not That Bad, which is a collection of essays curated by Roxane Gay, which is Dispatches from Rape Culture. Um, so it's basically a bunch of essays from a range of different people about how they deal with sexism and sex sexual assault and rape and just the general misogynistic environments that we're currently in. So if you're looking, it's a non-fiction as well. So if you're looking for a pertinent read and you, you don't mind being slightly uncomfortable, I would recommend it. But I didn't cry, but it, like it, it was a bit of a gut punch about that. Book that made me happy. Yeah, not I'm not really happy or unhappy. Like I've enjoyed the books, but I've not had one that's just radiated joy joy out of me. Question number 12 is the most beautiful book you've been given, received, given, purchased yourself. And I picked up this beautiful edition of Six of Crows, sorry, Liba Dugo, which is the collector's edition. So it's beautifully red and foiled. It has beautifully red sprayed edges. Books that I need to get to by the end of the year. Now, I went back and looked from January to the end of June on my TBRs and discovered that I had pledged to read about 20 books. And so I, I really want to get to those. I will link, it's my TBR graveyard video, I'll link that down below. But a few others I really want to get to would be Six of Crows, I really do actually want to get into. Curse So Dark and Lonely, Girls Made of Paper and Fire by Natasha Un Yang. I'm really sorry if I've uh, done any badly. Um, and then the final question is also a video or blog post that you're most proud of and it would have to be my reading vlogs um, because it was about doing those over extended periods of time and cutting them together and editing them. That's my mid-year freak out tag. And I hope you've been having a fairly good reading year so far. Goodbye.